What's up my Century Unit? It's the Central Man here, back again with another classic WrestleMania pay-per-view review. So, this weekend marks the 25th anniversary of this WrestleMania. Talking about WrestleMania 11, this show was at the Hoffick Civic Center. Right now it's the XL Center in Hoffick, Connecticut on the 2nd of April 1995. The attendance for WrestleMania 11 was, was it, was it, was it, 16,000? 305. The attendance was 1.2. This is uh, the baby uh, buyer was went down because I think it was no, I think it's lower than the 1.2 buy rate from WrestleMania. I think it was like fucking 12. You know, like the WrestleManias of the 90s, uh, when we get to the end to here, would low. They're in the low, not the I think the low, the lowest WrestleMania buy rate. Has to be WrestleMania 19 in the in 2003. Anyway, so I'm not going to get into the buy rates. Let's go with yeah. The celebrities in WrestleMania was <laughs> what the hell? They didn't even get good celebrities on this show. Let me see. You got like at least you got some good. You got Pamela Anderson who was in Baywatch. Uh, was it Jenny McCartney? She was in Playboy. And then you got like celebrities I'm not really heard of before because I'm you know. Um, I know, I know what Home Improvement is. It's got like Tim Allen in it. It's got uh, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Uh, he was in Home Improvement. Nick T uh, was it Tintonto was in New York PD or the star of NYPD. And then you got like, American football players, including uh, Steve Mongo McMichael, who went on to go to WCW later that year. You know, be part of you know via color commentator, be part of the Horsemen. And I think he won his first championship in WCW. It's good to see Mongo in in a wrestling environment, you know. Anyway, so yeah, and also you got Lawrence Taylor who went on to face Bam Bam Bigelow at WrestleMania later, really later on on the show. We'll get to that sh uh, later. Anyway, so the first match to kick off WrestleMania 11, we got uh, Ally Powers taking on the Blues Brothers. The Allied Powers, that is Lex Luger and British Bulldog taking on the Blues Brothers, that is Jacob and Eli with Uncle Sebediah as their manager. Uncle Sebediah is basically Seb Colt, the future Seb Coulter. So, you know, for people, I see a lot of people's like reviews and uh, talking about this match, or really talking about some of the all, all these WrestleMania matches of of, match, of WrestleMania 11 were bad. No, I don't think, uh, you know, some of the matches of WrestleMania 11 was bad, you know. This match was, wasn't was bad, it was, I think this was a good match. It wasn't bad, it wasn't like a memorable four-star classic, but it was a decent good match, you know. You know, like, um, because the heels dominate a bit, then, you know, the you know the, uh, the baby faces, you know, fight, you know, really fight off, you know, overturn it. To fight back, you know, you had a in the end bulldog. What he did, he kind of did a move. He did, he leaped over both Luger, and I think it was one members of the the Blues Brothers did like a roll up. He did like a sun flip roll up to win this match, and yeah, the, it's just a normal tag team match. Nothing special because the tag team. You know, unfortunately, this is not for the tag team belts. The tag, the tag team titles was defended by some other tag team. I'll get to the tag team title match later on. On this review, and yeah, he had the Allied Powers did the like the flexing, you know, you know, it's a damn shame the Allied Powers never become tag team champions. You know, they got potential, but unfortunately, the, the the timing was wrong. And then later on that year, Lex Luger went on to WCW, returned to WCW. Yeah, a decent good match between Allied Powers and the Blues Brothers. Okay, and then we got the Intercontinental Title match between Jeff Jarrett. And the roadie, the future road dog Jesse James, taking on Razor Ramon with the one two three kid at, at, in Razor's corner. The one two three kid is, you know, the future X Park, you know, Shell Waltman. And this was a decent good match. Not a classic intercontinental tile match, but this was a really good match. You know, like, you know, because they're both big versus a big man versus small match. Uh, you know, like Jarrett's not a small man, you know, he's six feet one, but. You know, Razor's a big dude, he's 6'7", but this was a good fucking match, you know. Um, you know, people, yeah, I don't like, the one thing, some people crap on Jeff Jet because he's kind of like overrated, because, you know, the world, you know, handed the world title 
on the Slaughter Plateau in WCW and also in TNA. It really keeps putting the world title on him in TNA, but in WCW, so basically, you know, he was kind of like overrated, but he was a good worker. But, you know, um, yeah, and like Jarrett, you know, Jarrett, you know, his gimmick, you know, he's kind of like a riff, he's ripping off Ric Flair, you know, with the strutting and the figure for leg lock, and also ripping off the Honky Tonk Man years later with the guitar shots. But he, with his old gimmick was a bit, he had some success, you know, you're doing the, 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 was it the country singing song from one of these uh, inner house shows in 95. But anyway, this was good, you know, like one month's the match, yeah, yeah uh, the roadie interfered. He kind of, like, uh, Jared's, you know, locking the figure for leg lock. Um, but Razor uh, countered it, kind of turned on his stomach and put the pressure onto Jared. Um, it was a big, big man for a small match. Um, Je uh, Razor was going for the, um, the, uh, the fi uh, going for the Razor's edge. Unfortunately, you had, um... Uh, Rody attacker uh, really enter the ring, attack Razor, you know, attack his leg, and then they both uh, Jarrett and Rody kind of beat down Razor and one two three kid, and then Jarrett locked in the figure four leg lock onto uh, kid, but they basically they you know Razor you know Razor kind of chase off the heels and that's it. It's a disappointment. It was a good match, but it ended in a disqualification. I watched it on the network. The network. I, I bet back then you're spending a lot of money on a pay per view. Your biggest Showing of the year, no one wants to see a, disc a match end in a disqualification. They just want to see a decisive winner. They had a, I don't think they had a rematch for the belt. They had a, they had a handicap match at the first in your house show in ninety, you know, in ninety five. If I do an in your house show, a pick classic preview of that show, I will do it in the in the future. So yeah, after those two good matches, Ally Powers, Blue Brothers, Jarrett versus Razor for the IC title. Yeah, this WrestleMania went downhill. We got King Kong Bundy with the Million Dollar Man in his corner, taking on under take on the Undertaker with Paul Bearer in Undertaker's corner. This like uh, Undertaker took ninety really he got injured in ninety four, missed WrestleMania ten due to injury. Uh, came back, you know, and he did that. You know, Ted DiBiase wants to destroy the Undertaker because the Million Dollar Man introduced the Undertaker at Survivor Series of 1995. Uh, not 1990, not 95, but 1990. Sorry, Duh. and like fast forward years later, he wants to destroy the Undertaker. Like you had to, you know, you know, he managed that match. You know, the fake Undertaker he had the Undertaker versus the fake Taker at SummerSlam in '94. You know, he's throwing his man to destroy the Undertaker. Destroy the dead man. So, um, yeah, um, yeah, this match sucked. You know, Undertaker in bad, in, the Undertaker's WrestleMania matches in the 90s were terrible. Not all, but you had Kane and Diesel were good. R Roberts was decent. I don't know about uh, Snooker, but yeah, he had a lot of shit matches. Bundy, Sid... Even a uh, uh, um, uh, John Gonzalez at WrestleMania Nine. Fucking hell, man! Yeah, one more of the match. You had basically a Taker snatch the urn away from Ted DiBiase, give it to Paul Bearer, but unfortunately the st uh, the urn was stolen again. Um, it was stolen. It was stolen again by Karma, the future uh, Godfather, the future you know, the future fuck his name, uh, Karma Mustafa from the um. The Nation of Domination, that set up the Undertaker karma match from SummerSlam in 95. Um, oh, I forgot, uh, before, I get, before I get to the rest of the match, I forgot, uh, I forgot the, uh, the, the, the commentary of this show. We got, yeah, the commentary for the show was Vince McMahon and Jerry the King Lawler. Yeah, JR is the interviewer for the whole show. And anyway, let's get back to the rest of the match. Yeah, and it was nothing much of a match. It was boring as fuck, man. Just boring. Basically, yeah, yeah Undertaker did the, the old school, did the clothesline on Bundy. Bundy did not, um... Sell the uh, the clothesline, and this is Bundy's first WrestleMania match since facing Hogan, uh, Hulk Hogan for WrestleMania two in the steel cage match. Yeah, this yeah, night and day. You know he had a he, Bundy had a great match, a good match with Hogan at WrestleMania two, and then fast forward a decade later, he's facing he's facing a, a shit match with Undertaker at WrestleMania eleven. You know it's just like I'm not saying Bundy's shit, but it's like this match was not that good. He had Larry Young. Uh, it was a baseball umpire as the special guest referee. This was shit. This was absolute shit. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, Taker got the win. He was going for the Tombstone Power Driver. 
but uh, you know, you can't even get Bundy up for the Tombstone Power Drive. It's like a decade later, he d he did that move on Mark Henry. He was about the same size as uh, King Kong Bundy, and then you know, and then a decade prior, he could not do perform a Tombstone Power Drive onto not Bundy, Bundy Mark Henry, but he can't even do it on Bundy. He did like a power, uh, was it a power slam, uh, was it a body slam and a uh, close line to win this match. And then he went on to still continue this feud between the Million Dollar Man and The Undertaker. Like Conor Mustafa, you know, regained the urn at SummerSlam 95. Undertaker in 95, he was kind of like stuck in the mid-card with crappy feuds. Anyway. <sighs> oh, anyway, let's move it on to, yeah, this match, uh, the, yeah, this WrestleMania never got worse, never got better, man. We, we got the WWF Tag Team Tile Match. We've got, yeah, the Smoking Guns, that is Billy and Botgorn, defending the belt against Owen Hart and and his mysterious opponent, that is Yokozuna. You've got bo uh, both Mr. Fuji and Gene Cornette in both Owen and Yoko's corner. And this match was shit. It was fucking boring. Uh, Yoko was weighing as 600 pounds, plus pounds. You know, you you know, this is his first pay-per-view appearance for months now before, you know, the last one was against The Undertaker at Survivor Series in 1994. It took some time off, and then it's just like 600 pounds, man. And he never was good in the ring, man. You know, in the end, he had to hit the bonsai drop on Billy Gunn. And Owen lo locked bo uh, Billy Gunn with the uh, sharpshooter to win this match, and they became the new WWF Tag Team Champions, you know. Okay, yeah, it's just it's never gonna get better. WrestleMania 11, we got Bret Hart versus Bob Backlund in an I Quit match. The very first I Quit match in not just in WWE history, I think it was in pro wrestling history, I think. And the guest star, the guest referee was Roddy Roddy Piper. Yeah, this took place in 1994. The rivalry between Bret Hart and Bob Backlund when uh, Backlund, you know, like you challenged Bret for the WWF title. On an episode of, of Superstars, Brett won that match, but Backlund got pissed off. He turned on Brett, locking him in the chicken wing crossface. That then becomes Cycle Bob Backlund, you know. And then he won the title from Brett at Survivor Series that year. Yeah, he dropped it. To, I'll get to the uh, the the D, uh, Shawn, Diesel Shot Michaels match after, but this is the rivalry, and this match sucked. Boring as fuck. Yeah, the, the yeah, Piper on the mic says, "Do you quit? Do you quit?" And it's so annoying, but. It's, what you know? I prefer watching the. I say a lot. Of I quit matches in the past. You know, with John Cena. I rather take the Cena matches. The I quit matches with Cena in it than this. It was boring. It was, it was shit. In the end, Brett got the win. Locked in the Bart Backlund submission fini finisher. The cross <laughs> chicken wing crossface to win this match. And that was the end of the rivalry. Okay, and then we got basically the match of the night. Unfortunately, did not save this WrestleMania. We got. Diesel vs Shawn Michaels for the WWF title. Uh, Michaels won the uh, yeah Michaels won the Royal Rumble that year to have a shot at the the champion. And the former because um, Diesel is Shawn Michaels' bodyguard. He Diesel debuted in '93 and '94 was Diesel's rookie year because they won the, he won the the same year he won the Titan titles. He won he won the Intercontinental title at the end of '94. He defeated. Bob Backlund in a house show to become the WWF title uh, champion, and you know, you know, he had a rock, a really good year for Diesel in '94, and also he had a good year in '95. But yeah, the, uh, Shawn Michaels' his new uh, bodyguard is Sid, not Cycle Sid, but just Sid. Um, yeah, it was big, big man versus small man, really good back and forth. Uh, but I think uh, the referee Herb, uh, Earl Hebner twisted his ankle, you know. You didn't really see Hebner twisting his ankle. He's basically holding his ankle. Um, it was basically shot. It was you know Diesel is a big man. Shawn Michaels is a high fly. You know a small man. He did like high flying maneuvers. The bought the moonsault, the 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 the, uh, the, the, the diving el elbow. He you know he hits a Diesel with the switching music, but unfortunately Diesel kicked out from that. Diesel overcome the odds. Hit the um the jackknot powerbomb onto Michaels to win this match. And retain the title, and people. I think people are cheering for cheering for Sean, but at the same time, boom for Diesel. I'm not gonna go into it. I think it's just like people. I think like, and this is the last time Shawn Michaels enter a pay per view as a heel until 1997, before you know, but he went babyface after that. So, anyway, 
yeah, match of the night, but did not. It was too little, too late. And then we got. I don't want to. I'm gonna get it shortly. We got Bam Bam Bigelow taking on Lawrence Taylor. Fucking shit of a match. Uh, Lawrence Taylor beat Bam Bam Bigelow, and that was the end. Unfortunately, no build up to this match. You know, yeah, just basically had a non wrestler defeating a current wrestler, an active wrestler. You know, um, you know, the Bam Bam Bigelow. That was the end of him. After that, you know, he, he stick around in 95, left in that year, late of, uh, I think it was late 95, early 96, and then he went on to ECW, did, went better things, you know, win an ECW title, and then went to WCW years later in the dying years in 2000, tag team title, win the tag team championship and hardcore title. Yeah, it didn't do nothing, I think, if they put it in the, if they put it in the middle portion of the card, I'll be okay, but in your main event, it didn't do Bam Bam Bigelow favors. It didn't do anyone favors, man. It's just like basically had a non wrestler, a football player, defeating a wrestler. It's just what it is. You know, he, he was okay in this match, Lawrence Taylor, but it, yeah, it was boring of a match. It was 11 minutes. I wish this just done it a squash match to make Bam Bam Bigelow look good. And he turned baby face after that. That really, the end, that was basically the kiss of death of Bam Bam Bigelow's run in the World Wrestling Federation, man. Anyway, so my final reign for the show, yeah. I think it's a bit better than WrestleMania 9. WrestleMania 9 was just shit, man. But WrestleMania 11 was, again, that's not saying too much. A bad show, three good matches, you know. Basically, had Michael, Diesel Michaels was match of the night. The opening match was good. Ally Powers and um, Blues Brothers. And even Jarrett and uh, Razor for the IC title was also decent instead of the DQ finish. But besides that, all most of the matches on the card were shit. Take a Bundy, the tag team title match. Brett versus Backlund in an I Quit match. And in the main event between Bam Bam Bigelow and Lawrence Taylor. So, yeah. That's my review on WrestleMania 11. Hope you like it. Leave your thoughts, concepts below. Smash the like button. Subscribe to the Century Man Network on YouTube. Next time, I did a... Next time, let's do one in the Attitude Era now. I'm going to review, four years later, WrestleMania 15. So, this is the Century Man officially signing out.